Once upon a time, Great George's Chapel was known as Liverpool's third cathedral. Come on, let's have you all down from that organ. Now! Now, Bill Harp and his friends are gradually transforming the shell of this chapel into a place where people can come to free their imaginations in art and play. Who's interested in acting in a play? Eh? Oh, yes. Yeah, and you'd be inter who's interested in, in like painting? <laughs> Who's interested in making a film? Me. Oh, wow. Well, look, when we've, got, when we've got the money, we'll make a film. But, but in... We ain't got the money. We couldn't make a film now, could we? Why not? Go and do banking then. How about football? Okay, you, you get your team, we get ours. Right, come on, let's get going. Colin, will you be ready? Oh, I'm not, I'm not. He'll be fair. He'll only call the corner. I'm back, I'm not forward. Who's in goal? Kevin! Right, go, lad! Right! Now, one of the main problems of art is that at the top you have your very best people. You have the best opera companies, the best ballet companies, the best theatre companies. But you don't have below the, the top professional level, the, the Liverpool and Everton of the arts, you don't have a culture in which everyone, in terms of the arts, is kicking a football around, is, is, is being involved. Practically the first thing we had to tackle when we started the Great George's project was how to decorate one very large area in the building. And we hit upon the idea of painting doors all the way around the four walls. We invited everyone who came in, and this varied from children aged five to 
adults in their 40s, 50s, 60s to paint any door of any sort, anywhere on the wall, as long as their door was different from anybody else's. The point was that people could and did approach it in um, almost any possible way. It ends up ultimately with a room where you have an image of a room in which people can, from that room, in their imagination anyway, um, travel anywhere they want to through any of these doors. At first I, I just looked at it and thought, my God, you know, we can't do anything here. It's, it's all too big and too much, but um, after a few sessions, I've been quite excited about it all now. You know. Okay, thank you. Relax, keep breathing, take any clothes off you don't need. Yeah. Far side, please. Okay, thank you. Let's have a look at the Bill Harp is trying to make it into a community, sort of neighborhood community center. I think that's a very good idea. And the, the, um, after all, it's only been going 12 months and they're going to have a play group and they have involved the local children in a whole number of things. And um, I think all these things are very good to, to involve the local people. It's nice, you know, nice things to do now, that nice. You know, when it really gets going, like, you know, help yourself to paint come in here and paint any time you want. There's anything to do. Help around, bit of woodwork, doing a bit of pottery, anything like that. I think with this place, you know, kids would be better in a way, you know, coming here. But there's nowhere really to go. When the dark nights come, they can't go out in the, out in the streets like it's too dark. Come here, only go two nights a week. And uh, nothing else, only this. Older children can be rather frightening in the amount of things they can destroy and in the size of things they can destroy, particularly things like buildings and the dangerous state they can leave them in. I think the destructiveness probably comes from um, lack of facilities, lack of any proper facilities for play in this area, and so they channel into destruction. I certainly hope once we get them in here, in a sort of play activities, that they will be encouraged to see that it is their activity as well within the building, you know. And I'm sure if this can be achieved, then the destructive elements will fall away. Well, when they first uh, come, you know, when they first open, like, you know, a bit of uh, things getting smashed up and that, you know, done a bit of damage. But, you know, kids started to help once they, sm once they smashed things up, like, they helped to clean it up. Then they smashed it again, they helped to clean it up.
years ago, I did attend a service here when the Dean of Canterbury actually was preaching and I came to hear him and of course then it was in all its glory. Um, but when the, when the church was empty, it was very, very badly vandalized so that by the time uh, Bill Hopp took over the uh, building, it was already in a, in a pretty bad state. I don't think we have any messianic intentions that we can, with our activities, help people. The idea that you facing someone can say, look mate, I can help you. Maybe a doctor can, maybe a priest can, but it's a little arrogant as an artist to say, I can, I can help you. No, we've got some activities and some games that I think people, if they came and joined in, would enjoy. And a number of our activities could affect the way people plan and live their lives. The wind blew hard and my guts roared like mad as I walked down through the discarded papers of last night's festivities, tripping through the seagull shit that sets the scene and paints the scene. Onwards I go into the last Savoy, being met by the stench of aging unwashed bodies, by the violence of youth gone wrong, by the pitiful looks of time-eaten mothers, each one left in a day long past each youth discussing his time inside or the scrubbery screwed last night or the time he stuck a guy with a bottle and I just watch for it's all I can do helpless as I am to help for the old will get older and youth will exist between poverty and prison but who cares, who cares <laughs> To end today's workshop, we're going to do something that in part is a tribute to John Latham. We're going to do a project on the status of words and the difficulty of communications, which is one of the things that John is about. Um, those of you who are blindfold have to be talked through the obstacle race by the partners who are not blindfold. The people inside the obstacle race can't go outside the white lines. The people who are doing the talking can't go inside the white line so your only communication is the words of your partner and it depends on your partner's words and your own muscles whether you get to the far end At the far end is a teapot the symbol of the British way of life and if you touch the teapot without touching anything else then you've won if you touch an object on the way you're dead okay Let's start from this end, one after another, and you're making your way to that end. Straight in front of you now, and the mop is at your feet, and there's a sponge cushion by your left foot. So could you crouch put down? Put right straight down, there's a beer can on the right hand side of it. That's all right, now then, put the left hand forward. You're all right, you know, it's about three inches outside. Okay. Yeah, now, um, you can move the left hand further to the left, if it'd be more comfortable. That's all right, now. Now, can you bring your left foot up to it, taking it up over the tins? Up! Up! I've touched it. He's dead in there. Can you bring your feet up to where your knees are and then stand on your feet? Clear, is it? 
Yes, but yes, okay. Watch your left arm. It's very close to the chair. Okay. Now stand there, but stand up slowly. Yes. Just stand up slowly. Okay, you can stand up now. That's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Don't cut. That's better. That's better. Now forwards. Now, just bend. Okay. Stop. Okay. Um, Careful with that right foot. Right hand because you, your right hand was nearly out of the line. You're so at a diagonal. Bend, bend, bend really low. Further, further, further. Even further than that. Now, over to the right. That's it. Okay. Now the other forward. That is still inside. Yeah. Now to the right. Forward. And now then, straight on there. And forward and together. Okay. And now, now staying on the same up. spot, turn about 30 degrees to your left. There's nothing in your way at the moment. There's no problem, but there's going to be. Six inches to be safe. That's it. Keep now. Um, turn your head to what is the inches you like. In the auditorium of Great George's, John Latham and the Event Structure Research Group present a show they call The New Written. sand drift from India, the plastic feels like else. that when it goes no through. Idea she went in. You're so sort of concerned with trying to keep your feet, but you don't have time to think about the people outside very much. Uh, but this expanse around you. you. It just goes from under your feet and you just fall when it gets very strong. Yeah, well, then, you know, it feels sort of as though you've been released. It's a vast expanse Experience around you. environment. You're lulled into a false sense of security and that when you fall, you think you're going to sink gently to the ground. You're enjoying it. You're conscious of enjoying it. You've got a big smile but you don't. Face. It's got friendly now, so you can have a good time and play with it instead of being Although afraid of can. it. See, if you're totally cut off from the rest of the hall, if you're on the outside, you can see out in five minutes. You're very glad to get out into the air because it gets very moist and very damp. You can yeah. still feel the plastic afterwards mm. when you're walking around. It's just, it's just, it's just not, you can't compare it with anything else. 